four seven piecewise functions. So a piecewise function is a function defined by two or more equations. And each piece of the function applies to a different part of its domain. So thinking about that, let me just rewrite this. Um, this will be f of x equals, and then we have this little squiggly line there to say that it splits it up into two. We'll have x minus two if x is less than or equal to zero. And then we'll have two x plus one if x is greater than zero. So what this does is it breaks up this function f over its domain. So we have the top part of it, that's for x less than or equal to zero, and the bottom part of it for x greater than zero. Both of these are lines. Um, and then the graph here is for this function. Let's look at it. Um, so x minus two, if x is less than or equal to zero, that would be the left side of it. There's that line, right? It has a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative two. But once it gets up to zero, we have a closed circle, right? Because less than or equal to, and we have to go to the other equation, the blue equation. This one has a slope of two and a y-intercept of one. It says if x is greater than zero, not greater than or equal to, just greater than. So we have an open circle on its edge, right, down zero. And then it continues the function with a slope of two. Right, so it kind of breaks it up there. Um, a step function is a piecewise function defined by a constant value over each part of its domain. If you'd like to look more at that, um, it's on page 230 in the book, but generally its graph is going to look something like this, like little steps. Kind of neat. You should look up that in the book. Um, example 13. Let me see if I can copy that one down nicer. This says f of x equals 4x plus 3 if x is less than 1, and x plus 7 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So there's our function f, and it says to evaluate it when x is 1 and when x is 0. So looking here, we'd have f of 1, that's whenever I plug in 1. Before I plug in, I have to decide, am I going to plug into the top part or the bottom part? Um, 1 would belong to this one, because it says x is greater than or equal to 1. So I plug into that bottom piece, and it'll be 1 plus 7 equals 8. I do the same thing for f of 0. This time I'm going to plug it into the top one, and I'll have 4 times 0 plus 3, which is 3. All right, scrolling down, example 14. We're going to graph a function and describe its domain and range. So let me copy this down correctly. It should say y equals negative 2x plus 4 if x is less than or equal to 1, and x minus 1 if x is greater than 1. And, of course, we had the little squiggly line there. All right, so we're going to graph that and describe its domain and range. Um, first off, I guess I need to draw a little graph here. Now I know that it's going to have an, a, a break or a jump or something. Something's going to change at one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a little dotted line at x equals one to remind me that there's gonna be something interesting that happens at the graph there. To the left of that, this is x is less than one. And to the right of it, it's x is greater than one. So on the left side of the graph, I'm going to use this equation, the top equation there. So let me see if I can get any more space in this. 
There we go. There. So I would have an intercept of four, one, two, three, four. And it has a slope of negative two. So I'll go down two and over one. And I'm hitting that red line whenever I go there. It says x is less than or equal to one in my equation. So I can have a closed circle on that. Now that I have two points, I can go ahead and sketch my little graph there. And it would be like that. Now I need to go on to the other side of it. I'll color it blue just to remind us. Um, so this is x minus one. Well, for starters, let's see, what would that line be like on the red line? So I need to plug in one into that and I'd have um, one minus one equals zero. So I'm gonna have an open circle at the point one, zero. So there's my open circle. This has a slope of one. So I'm gonna go up one over one, up one over one. And I can draw a little arrow there, right? So if I just looked at this yellow highlighted part, it would look like the equation that I've highlighted yellow. If I just looked at the blue part, it would look like the equation that I highlighted blue. Together, it makes the piecewise function. It makes it that has a little jump there. All right, let's look at another one. We're gonna write the piecewise function for the graph. Um, this one's actually an absolute value graph, right? So we could describe an absolute value graph a little bit differently. Um, I'll start off by saying, well, f of x equals, draw my squiggly lines. So let's start off by looking at this piece there. This looks like the line y equals negative x plus 3. So in my function here, I'm going to say, well, negative x plus 3. And where does it stop? It would stop right here, which is x equals 3. So I'll say for x less than or equal to 3. On the right side, this would be, oh, I meant to highlight that. That would be the line y equals x minus 3. Right. If you can continue this down, it would end up touching down there at negative 3. So this would be x minus 3. And again, it butts up at x equals 3. So I'm going to have an x and a 3. It's greater than 3. And these actually butt up to each other, and there's a closed circle there. So it doesn't really matter which one I decide goes with x equals 3. I just have to pick. Because I already put less than or equals on the first one, I have to leave it as just a plain old greater than, right? If you were doing this on your own and you had answered like this with the or equals to on the bottom, that would also be good, right? It doesn't matter which one it goes with. Most of the time, I will give it to the top one or the one that I guess is more to the left on the graph. All right, example... 15 again, is this supposed to be example 16 maybe? Write a piecewise function for the graph. Um, this left piece would be y equals, well it has a slope of two, so two x and an intercept of negative one. And this piece up here would be y equals four. So putting that together, I'd have f of x equals, the left piece is two x minus one, and the right piece is just plain old four. Looking at the left piece, I'll highlight it yellow. Um, it has a closed circle on x equals two. So I'll say that this is x is less than or equal to two. And then looking at the other one, I'll highlight it blue, has an open circle on x equals two. So this is gonna be x is greater than two. And that's it. All right. Uh, make sure that you have these two examples. That would be good to look at for your um, homework. And also this one, too, would be a good one to look at for the homework. All right, that's all.